This is The Great Expanse by John Bet 426 here on YouTube. So glad you guys could join me here on Sunday morning. And we got some Gotham Knights information. And I'm sure there's a lot out there, but I'm just giving them as I see them. You know what I mean? So uh, thank you for coming to the channel. I hope you subscribe so that when new material is released, you will be the second person to know and I will be the voice. So that The Great Expanse can expand. It can enlarge. <laughs> Alright, so it says Gotham Knights creating a more dangerous Harley Quinn. Interesting. A more dangerous Harley Quinn? Har Harley Quinn is already, like, unstable. You know what I mean? And, and it's weird because she has this vast knowledge of psychiatry because she was a psychiatrist. Criminal psychiatrist, at least. And the fact that she's crazy and just a loose cannon with all this information makes her... A, a time bomb that can just go off at any second. Like, even though the Joker is insane, the Joker is still level-headed. He's not as unstable as Harley Quinn, because she's just a goofball. A goofball with, like, crazy acrobatics and won't hesitate to kill you. So, is Gotham Knights, is Har Gotham Knights Harley Quinn, is she just the villainous Harvey Harley Quinn? Is she anti-hero Harley Quinn? Let's find out. And we are going to Gotham Knights creating a more dangerous Harley Quinn on IGN in 3, 2, 1, go. Welcome to my party! She is coming not from a place of, oh, I gotta be zany, I'm your manic pixie. Like, like she doesn't need to be the manic pixie anymore. She is... Kind of manic gotten pixies. to a point where she knows who she is. She has a very clear sense of what her identity is. And she's going to present herself in this much stronger, kind of developed supervillain way. Gotham Knights Harley Quinn super is a villain. very so interesting case study in how to adapt a beloved comic book character. Her look, her voice, and her brand of villainy are immediately recognizable. But her story and her reason to be is fundamentally altered. That came out of a general philosophy for villains that guided Warner Brothers Games Montreal throughout the design process. All of the villains that we've included in Gotham Knights were chosen for a few reasons. One, we, we knew we wanted recognizable members of the rogues gallery, Great but face. we also wanted specific villains who Mr. had Fleas. an interesting relationship with Batman where once you took Batman out of the picture, it would cause that character to question, well, what's my function now? Like, in a world where I don't have my main nemesis, what do I do next? Where for the likes of Mr. Freeze... Traditionally, questioning that's only the Joker's to, well, sort of dilemma. Like, 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 I really can't exist without Batman. All these other guys can. Personal and more I don't mind them taking for that start, for all the these guys. chose to depict an older wiser Harley than we've ever seen Older, in wiser before, Harley. One no longer led by other people's whims. We really did make a conscious choice of allowing her to be a slightly older version of Harley Quinn than we've seen elsewhere. That informed a lot of choices. It informed like a bunch of the performance choices that were made uh, in shooting cinematics. It informed her fighting style. It informed how she, how she presents herself, how she costumes herself. As we'll see in some of the uh, middle chapters of the Harley Quinn arc, even how she presents herself to Gotham City. Oh, Crucially, though, this isn't a different Harley Quinn. It's one further down her personal timeline than we're used to seeing. As Redding puts it, this Harley has been through two main acts of her story already. We are familiar with her as, like, the Joker's accomplice and, and girlfriend and kind of pathological love interest. And we're familiar with her breaking free from that and finding herself kind of in her Suicide Squad era, where she's kind of Sammy being coerced into doing the right thing or doing terrible things for good reasons, sort of anti-hero. And this is kind of coincides with the fact that she's such a fan favorite. People love this character that they kind of want to root for her. So they kind of want to see her doing things that at least ultimately have a positive outcome, even if she does it in an insane and chaotic way. For us, we thought, well, that idea of Harley kind of branching into the, into the direction of good, that's been pretty well explored in a lot of places. So we thought, well, what happens if we take her the other way? What happens if Batman's absence and the kind of rise of his successors kind of inspires Harley to say, well, why don't I, why don't I finally get to have my career as a supervillain? 
on my own. I have all sorts of ideas. I'm a brilliant psychiatrist. Like, there's all sorts of crazy things that I can do, especially in Gotham City. Effectively, this Harley Quinn superpower is self-actualization. After years spent working in the shadow of others, she's now unleashing the true Harley on Gotham. For the art team, it was a fascinating process Ooh. to find what this version of the I love that third one. Like. As you can tell from the many different concept sketches. That would have been video. so good. That, the one in all white. Physically aging her up. It's more like just a mental, like a confidence that maybe she didn't have before. I mean, on the visual side, it was cool because this is a. Uh, maybe it's not enough black, white, and red because it's mostly white, but I really like that. Third from one. what we'd seen from Harley before. The same kind of haircut, the same kind of clothes, even having her more closely tie in with Gotham Knight's unruly freaks gang, who will ally with her at points during the game. Associate character art director Jan Lee Wu said that design was fairly far along before the team was told to scrap it and try something new. The criteria we were giving was to make her really fresh, new, and iconic. That was one of those key words yeah. I remember from going through that process. It was very challenging, but also it was such an exciting opportunity for us to go about this character because not often we can deviate that much from her iconic haircut mm -hmm. and all that. And we were pretty much given don't do that, we want something new. The result is a Harley that references the past of the character in new ways. Her boss fight costume makes use of the black and red design with diamond accents that was part of her original appearance in Batman the Animated Series, but pushed further with the diamond design made more prominent. Like her hair and makeup have changed, even her Upside down hammer part. has grown up. This constant balance between the Harley we know and the Harley we'll get to know touched every part of her design, even how she fights. We had a very specific vision in mind for Harley. She's more herself than she's ever been in her imagination in our Gotham. She has taken this opportunity to say, I am actually a bad person. This is the, the version of myself that I want to be. I want the freedom to do whatever I want to Gotham and in Gotham. When we got into designing her combat, we Loved the old, I have a big goofy hammer, but if you take that into the Gotham Knights aesthetic, it becomes a actual giant heavy block of metal that later in the boss fight has a lot of articulated sparking electrical equipment attached to it to make it worse. Harley's not often one for straight up hand-to-hand -hand combat. Indeed, her villainous plot involves providing implants to Gothamites that remove their inhibitions and allow them to live their best life, which inevitably leads like them to violently attacking you when you try to stop her. Her moveset is really about moving through this crowd of enemies that she attracts because she has all these devotees to just essentially to slow you down and distract you. And she constantly keeps that hammer in motion and she's very strong, she's very powerful, she's extremely agile. And it's always about the player or players trying With to speed. get the opportunity she's agile, to but she's worth your something while. Harley is doing and deal damage to her before that big hammer comes back upon you. Ultimately, like any gaming boss, Gotham Knight's Harley Quinn is first and foremost a foil for the player, designed to offer interesting wrinkles of story and gameplay. But the way the team has turned her into that foil is a wonderful way to honour the character herself. Redding points out that it's a neat reflection of what the Gotham Knights themselves are going through. These are four sidekicks being forced to grow up and take on a lead hero's mantle. Harley's doing the same for a supervillain. Where Joker was always a mirror to Batman, it seems Harley is aiming to perform the same favour for whoever steps up as a new Dark Knight. Redding mm -hmm. sums it up in words that could have come from Harley's own mouth. Hell, if they want to be the new protectors of Gotham City, well, they're going to need a villain. They're going to need a nemesis. And who better to do it than me? I understand how the game is played. If you want to know more about Gotham Knights, we just completed an entire month of IGN first content on the game, including the first 16 minutes of gameplay and a giant hands-off preview. Okay, again, the animation, like, when it ended with Batgirl there just now, her, her face looked like it belonged on a mannequin. I mean, her actual face. And then when... What they call them? The Brutes Gang? Or did they say the Freaks Gang? When the guys are like walking, it's like blocky. Doesn't work. I'm sorry. Or it, it takes me out of it for a second. But this is about Harley Quinn. Let's keep it on Harley Quinn. I like her design. I like I like the explanation. She's older. 
Uh, she wants to take the place of her pudding, since Joker's apparently going to. So that's why it also leads me to believe that this is in the same vein as the Arkham series, because Batman and Joker are going. So we have the rise of the Gotham Knights, Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl, and Robin. And now with the Joker absent, there's a huge power vacuum. And you really saw that in Arkham Knight, where you see Scarecrow, you see Arkham Knight working on behalf of Scarecrow. You see Penguin, you see all the rogues, Two-Face, uh, Riddler, Deathstroke. They're all vying to fill the power vacuum left by the Joker. So it does only make sense that Harley Quinn, now that she's growing up some, you know, that she would want to take the place of the Joker. So I, I'm buying this. But it's just something in the animation still. It's, it's just... It's just off. Something's, something's off. But again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a VFX, you know, savant. So who am I to say? But I, I can only go by the eye test. I'm not digging mannequin face Batgirl. <laughs> and I'm not digging, uh, uh, you know, the blocky robots. Supposed to be passing for people. Instead, they pass as computer-generated characters. And they're not supposed to. Anyway, this has been my take. What's your take? Are you going to get Gotham Knights? I believe it's cross-compatible, right? PS5, Xbox, PC. Should be. I'm going to get it. Are you?